I told this to, I went into a meeting with Vince to pitch him some ideas and I told him to his face, if you have a three hour wrestling show and you can't find five minutes for me to do something, then you failed. You're a failure. And I would say that again to his face because that's what it is. Um, the producing thing was not only a, three a, hours of that's one night. That's, <laughs> they, they had like just, six or five. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. That's, that's where so I many was. hours of TV. I, I was on Monday Night Raw, so that was what. Eric, this is not your first time here in Chicago, right? No. So for Chicago audiences, you guys are coming back um, August. 14th for 15th or 12th uh, and 13th. 12th and 13th. Okay, I got the dates uh, um, for, for a show. It's, it's been a while. Has it been since Bound for Glory? You guys haven't been back here? Man, yeah, I think it's been a while. My memory is uh, they all run together. I mean, I, I, I got a terrible memory for those kind of things, but I know that, that Impact or TNA uh, hasn't been here in a while. And I mean, we were talking off air. It's like such an amazing wrestling city, such an amazing city. Something about the energy here, I don't know. What is it you think about this being the wrestling? We've heard everyone, like Steve Austin, Ed, yep. Edge, everyone constantly talks about Chicago being like the city. I know, yeah. it just, is it the fans? Like, I, I, I still try to figure out as being a fan here. I know they're passionate, they always fill up the house no matter what, but what do you notice, you've been around the world about this town sort of that, that makes it a different wrestling town yeah, than other? I, I mean, I wish I knew the answer to it because then I would try to, Whatever that is, whatever the special ingredient is, I try to get that everywhere else in the world. Bottle because, it up, right? The truth is, is it is there is something special about the energy, uh, about the the appreciation and respect for for what's happening in, in the wrestling world. Um, yeah, man, I, I wish I really wish I knew. I don't. Maybe it's the brutal winters, and then you know you're either get to go inside and do something cool, or, or get to hide from the heat in the in the summer. I don't know, man. Like there's lots of places that are cold, lots yeah. of places that are hot in the summer that that aren't like this, you know. Uh, there's something special about Chicago, and it's been that way as long as I can remember. Even as a fan, like when Raw or like some other wrestling promotion would do shows here, there's just something different about it. And and as a performer, as a person that gets to feel that energy, man, like it, it can make you do some pretty wild things. Yeah, do you guys like kind of talk in a locker room about it? Like it, sometimes a town that's coming up, like you get extra amped up among you know the performers in yeah, the back, like oh sure. Chicago's coming. It's or... always part of the discussion, um, whether it's you know a special building or. Uh, a special crowd or a special atmosphere or maybe it's something that you remember that you did here something special in your career sure like i said earlier you know i don't i couldn't tell you, you yeah mean, like you could say hey remember the last time you were in fort lauderdale i don't remember at all <laughs> i can barely remember what i did last week but i know that anytime i work here anytime uh, i perform anywhere in chicago it feels special i mean yeah. and it's it's literally just the energy and it's that energy and, and that, that feeling of performing and people enjoying or booing or whatever it is that's happening, it's a drug, you know, it, it's a drug that can't be bought, uh -huh. it can't be duplicated and it can't be replaced. And I'm addicted to it. I've been addicted to it for over 25 years. And you never think you'd be at a point where you'd be working in empty arenas, you know, just a couple of years ago, yeah. like you would never think in any, either athlete's career or whatnot, you know, that you'd be doing like actual shows in an empty arena and now, that changes right when you when you feel the energy that's taken away like how much you guys lose as performers in a sense being with those like no reactions when you guys had during the pandemic when you were working. yeah i mean for me it's it's cool in a way if i could go back in time and erase the pandemic totally mm -hmm. uh, i would do that um i mean i don't think there'd be anybody that wouldn't um I'm sure but for me i'm part of this small kind of like fraternity of people in wrestling that live that I mean, that's never happened before right. in the history of the business or in the documented history of the business. And I hope it never happens again. So in this weird way, like that's a feather in my cap, I can say that I aided and helped carry a television digital company through a, a span of time where it worked in front of nobody. And wrestling is designed and was created to work in front of live crowds. Totally. Before the invention of television, wrestling still existed. Pro wrestling was, you know, invented through carnivals and stuff. It was done in front of a live audience. The live audience is just as important as we are, you know, and without it there, I think the product really suffers, but it's like this weird, I'm experiential. Like I, I want to experience uh -huh. everything good, bad, and indifferent. And I experienced, it. and I can say, I, I hope to never do it again. It sucked and it was painful. And when you get really good at it, like being able to feel what the, the crowd is into and reacting to how they're reacting is when you get really good at, at what we do mm -hmm. and not having that feedback. Like you're just kind of like doing whatever it is that you're doing, 
hoping that it's good and not having any idea. Yeah. Like, I'm wrestling a Rich Swan, and in my mind, it's this amazing five-star match, but I don't really know until people see it of how they're going to take it because there's no feedback mm -hmm. at all. So it, uh, it, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that I could have done without. Uh, yeah. But it, but it is cool in that way that I can say I lived through that. I mean, right. Like these 200, 300 people that were wrestling for wrestling companies in North America that yeah. can say they experienced something that other pro wrestlers have. I've wrestled in front of four people before, but at least there was four. <laughs> right. You know? There's some you hear. Then you hear those four people. You, hear, you know. So yeah. wrestling in front of zero people. Like yeah. I can remember, you know, laying there and selling and like I can hear the lights like rotating. <sighs> It's little, eerie. Like, it's really weird. It was really weird. I hope it never happens again. Um, but we all got through it, and uh, we're on the other side of it now, it feels like, at least. And um, it's just really good to have crowds back there. Oh, for sure. You know, and speaking, you go from talking about that to that Slammiversary match. I was on that conference call with you and Josh, and, and I just spoke to Josh last week. Man, you got, it's crazy. I asked him that, too. Like, when there's so much, like, hype for a match, and it's so much pressure, too, with a 20th anniversary, you guys are headlining it and then the match actually hits you know and it actually comes through and it lives up to expectation because a lot of times sometimes big builds don't okay, yeah. but you guys lived it up and what does it feel afterwards when, when you kind of hit that home run when when it's a lot of pressure on it the game's on the line you guys actually hit that home run yeah. is what sort of feeling do you have after the match going back to the locker room in a sense yeah i mean pride for sure mm -hmm. because like you said sometimes it's hard to deliver you mean yeah wow. and the truth is i've said this in other interviews I live for that pressure. Like, I crave it, man. Like, at this point in my career, like, I've accomplished more than I ever thought I was going to in wrestling. I'm, I'm a short, chubby kid from southwestern Ontario. I grew up in a town. There's probably more people staying at this hotel right now <laughs> than in sure. the town that I grew up in. So, like, the percentage chance of me sitting here talking to you and doing the things that I've done and traveling and having this amazing career in the wrestling world, it's less than probably a 5% chance that that happens. And... <laughs> Someone just walked past the yeah. camera. That's all fine. We got a oh. digital version. But this just shows they don't care. <laughs> and, and it happened. So yeah. um, for me, uh, there's part of it is relief, right? Because you're, you know, as a performer, you're well aware of that pressure. And if you're not aware of it, then you should do something else. Yeah. Um, so you're well aware of the pressure. You're well aware of the standard that Josh has set uh, and the standard that I hold myself to. And, and we're two people that are brutal on each on ourselves mm -hmm. you know no one can, can critique me harder than i'm going to critique myself and i would imagine he's got the same way so it's 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 a massive relief but there's a huge sense of pride of we created something special and we both were promising that and you were going to have to kill me for me to not produce that kind of a result you know sometimes it doesn't happen that way but um i i think uh, i've proven over my career and josh has definitely proven this too you're gonna put a bar and I'm gonna to try to jump over it. And I might not make it every time, but damn sure that the effort's gonna be there. Yeah, really proud of that match, really proud of the proud of the whole show and oh, yeah. being in my backyard and you know, the nostalgia of it twenty years to the day, not on the same building but in the same grounds that I, I had my first match in in two thousand and four. So yeah, it was really special for a lot of reasons. Uh, and my first time ever wrestling Josh in yeah. a singles match, a, a guy that you know, broke into the same area I did. We know a lot of the same people wrestle for a lot of the same promotions, but I was basically signed my deal in 2004, 2005, and was on my way out of Ontario mm -hmm. when he was just getting started. So kind of like two ships in the night, you know, and, and uh, you always hear and, you know, see clips and then the stuff that he was doing in, in Impact. And, and then I came back and all the stuff that he was doing and uh, the, the 60 minute match with TJP and really kind of putting himself on the map. And, and uh, he's done everything right his whole career. and. It couldn't happen to a better dude and to share a moment like that with someone like that that's done everything right mm -hmm. and has wanted it for so long and now has it and is still the hardest worker in the room every single night it's super cool man it's, it's, it's full uh, circle stuff you know it's what I mean? very it's, full circle stuff yeah it's, it's unbelievable it's like meant to be you know yeah. when you look at it, especially 20th anniversary it just it fit you yeah. know in that way yeah. uh it's interesting because I feel like sometimes you, you are like some like the cockroach that won't die, yeah, you know, yeah. like I feel like when you were NXT and, and great idea with sanity, I, I thought that was something. But then they just didn't use you properly. I don't know, they tried to maybe turn you into a producer or whatnot. Yeah. But like, did you envision at that point where it almost felt like people were trying to end your career? Kind of like, you know, 
deviate from wrestling to yeah. be where you at now wrestling main event at Slam University in a 20 and like that wasn't that long ago you no. know that it, no. it just it's crazy how also like people trying to force you in a sense away or down or like move out yeah and if you gave into it then it could have been over in a sense or this wouldn't have happened at least right yeah Do you I, think about that so for me I, I don't think it was ever a plan to push me out it was mm -hmm. um Obviously, the main roster thing did not go well. Anyone that watches wrestling or has followed my career is well aware of that. Sure. Um, I was just never given an opportunity, you know, and that's just the reality. I was there, but I never did anything of substance. I was never, I, I don't know how anyone that worked there could decide I was good or bad because they never saw me do anything. So uh, the truth is, it, it's, uh, I'm not the first person they missed on. I've said this in every interview since. Oh, yeah. I'm not the first person they missed on. I will not be the last. I point out, like, Kenny Omega didn't last six months. He was there. He's maybe the best wrestler in the world today, bell to bell. He he didn't survive six months and was fired. So th they don't care, right? They, they're they just busy making billions of dollars. Uh, I told this to, I went into a meeting with Vince to pitch him some ideas, and I told him to his face, if you have a three-hour wrestling show, and you can't find five minutes for me to do something, then you failed. You're a failure. And I would say that again to his face because that's what it is. Um, the producing thing was- Not only a, three a, hours, of, that's for one night. That's, <laughs> they, they had like just, six or five, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's where so I many was. hours of TV. I, I was on Monday Night Raw, so that was what I said to him. You know, And I didn't say it in a derogatory way or-, or in, Sure. Uh, it, and everything he's done and, and the wrestling world in his, created in his vision. And he's a, a brilliant promoter. Uh, he's a brilliant, Booker creatively, uh, I think he's out of touch and, and definitely is the losses are starting to pile up. Yeah. But it's been said I, a lot, by the way. I have an, I have an amazing <laughs> life, and people in wrestling have an amazing life. Impact exists, AEW exists, a Ring of Honor existed, all those companies exist, and this is a billion dollar industry because of him. And if you don't believe that, then you're wrong. Your history is twisted. You don't have to like him as a person. I certainly don't. Sure. But uh, you have to respect what he did for wrestling. Um, and the producing when I was there, that was a favor to, to Triple H. I was, wasn't really being used. I was being paid full time. And he said, I think you'd be good at it. What do you think about trying it out? And I'm like, well, I'm there anyways, you know, so I might as well. Uh, and I think, I think I was, if he had more creative control, uh, things would be better. Things would have been lot way different more. for me. Yeah, uh, things would have been way different for me. And he's the kind of guy. And you know, people say one thing about him, the other thing. I I would do anything for him. I'd run through a wall. I would help him hide a dead body. Whatever, he, <laughs> whatever he asked me to do, <laughs> uh, I, I respect him that much. And he, uh, I owe him a lot. He asked me to do it, so I did it. I did it for 16 weeks, and they wanted me to do it full time. And I said I'm not interested. But at the time, they said if you want this job at any point. And I believe still to this day, if I wanted that job, it could be sure. right. But oh, I'm not yeah. interested in it. Yeah, I'm not interested in it. Not right now. Probably not ever, to be honest. Yeah, your expertise. I mean, you've, you've seen it all in a sense. You know, the, the independence. You know, you, you've been around this business, seen a lot of changes. Yeah. Do you foresee being in the industry somehow involved once your in-ring career is over? Like, do you want to do maybe announcing or producing or just kind of... Or wrestling is the thing you want to be kind of only known for. And once that's over, you're moving on to the next chapter of yeah, your life. I believe when I'm done in ring, I don't think you'll ever see or hear from me again, to be mm. honest. Um, I've been doing it for a long time. I, I still enjoy the performing aspect, but the travel and the, you know, it, it, sure. all the other stuff that comes with it, the politics of it, and the, you know, it's exhausting. You know, yeah. it's, it's just not for me. I'm not programmed that way. I, I, you know, it took me much longer to get to where I am because I'm just not a political person. I don't, I don't have the mind, I don't have the, the, the patience or the, the mindset for it. I, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be rewarded on mer on my own merits, on my skill and my ability, mm -hmm. and because I'm a good person and I do things the right way, or I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to step on somebody or push somebody aside. I'm not going to manipulate situations. I just, my mind just doesn't work like that. It never has. It'll catch up with you eventually, no matter what aspect of, of the, you I believe, know, of I believe that's true. world I believe that, you do things like I, that. I believe you that's know? true. But it, in, in, in wrestling, like a lot of people's success can be directly linked to that. Sure. And, uh, and I think that's been well enough documented that we don't have to get into that. But for me, the second I feel I can't perform at a high level, I can't do the things that I want to do and things that I believe in, or I feel I need to be carried, or I feel I'm saying I don't want to do those things because I'm hurt or I'm old, I'll retire. Mm -hmm. I told that to Scott when I find, signed my first deal here uh, two years ago. And the second I feel like that, I'll walk up to him and I'll say, I'm not coming back. You can continue to pay me if you want, but you will never see me again. You just and know. It'll, I'm it'll, done. It's probably, 
I wonder if it's moment just kind of comes to you and you just know one day you yeah. wake up like I think this is it. You know, yeah. like this I, I it think so. happens to every athlete in a sense in other sports too. You know, we just yep. either you're forced out, which isn't the ideal thing, right? No. Like you I don't need want to go. Be out. It's he can't do it anymore. Yep. You know, versus yep. that thing. For me, I, I love it too much and I respect it too much. I, I'm not gonna be. 65 and yeah. trying to do this at a, at a lower level. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. I have too much pride in my body of work. I have too much pride in, in myself and in what wrestling means to me. And that's singular. You know, it's art yeah. in the end. And, and you, if you want to do it, Ric Flair is going to wrestle in a couple weeks from now. <laughs> Insane. And I hope he, I hope everything goes well and I hope he's healthy after. And but that's, that, you don't well. want to worry about that. You don't want to worry gonna, about someone's health going into a match. You're like, oh, I hope everything's just okay. I'm not going to be that guy. I'm going to yeah. sell my house and live in an RV with my dog and my wife there you go. and you will never hear from me or see from me again you know it kind of leads me I, I talked to Josh and Moose lately I discovered like Josh big NBA guy yeah. and um, big movie guy which we have that in common Moose big superhero guy what sort of outlets do you like outside of wrestling that you're you're either kind of like hobbies or interests or yeah. are, you, are you into any stuff like that I mean sports outside of this is uh -huh. my big thing you know wanted to play hockey mm -hmm. my whole life I still play hockey um Poorly, but I still play. It's more for exercise now in rec leagues. Why not? Um, but I have a, a a hockey show on FTN and Game Plus Network uh, cool. called Dangle Bet Sally. Um, I'm, in August, I'll start my fantasy football show uh, with uh, FTN and Game Plus Network, and I, I've been doing that for almost ten years now on the side. Uh, obviously, you know, television is always. You've done like a hosting a fishing show or something yeah, like that prior, yeah, right? Yeah, I did. Well, uh, yeah. Two, two 12 episode seasons on Animal Planet, which is owned by Discovery. Yeah. Um, and then I did 12 episodes of an extreme adventure show that also aired on Animal Planet. So definitely have experience mm -hmm. doing it, loved it. Um, would do you do like that again. in front of the camera sort well, of thing, hosting a show, you know, kind of guiding something different? Than, it's weird. It, yeah. And I think people that are good in front of the camera don't worry about being in front of the camera. Yeah, it I becomes natural. I don't so. think about it, the camera there. I just, I'm just being myself. You mm -hmm. know? And there's things that I have to do, uh, you know, turn my body in a certain way and speak. And we did a lot of like fourth wall stuff, uh, man versus food sure. uh, kind of thing where I would talk directly to the camera in the show because that's what was popular in that space at the time um but i don't i never really thought about the camera being there i'm just like i'm on this amazing adventure mm -hmm. and i'm just gonna do it and say and react and do the things that i think i would do because in the end it was me yep. you know a version of me um yeah i, I loved it but you know I, how hard it's for a lot of people on camera like i do a lot of stuff on camera but people worry about it and get in their head yes. and, and just it's not natural when you're watching someone it's like you expect I think fucking up and messing up is part of like relatability when you watch a home because it makes sure. you more human. Sure. And when someone's watching, they're like, okay, yeah, I see that they're not a robot. They're just not perfect they're at a it. Person, yes. Like and me. it's more, it's more relatable. You, you kind of root for those people, you know? Yep. So I was like, of course I'm going to mess up. It's like a human interaction, you yep, know, that's right. in that way. And that's what makes good hosts and on camera personalities. And you seem to have a grasp of that, you know? And, Boy, you've been wrestling for so many years. The camera shut down on uh, the light shut down, so it's probably right. Tell me to wrap Still up. Got a little bit of light. Yeah. <laughs> um, as I wrap up here, who are some of the favorite guys you like to watch now? Are you thinking a next generation kind of of wrestlers coming up? Who who do you like wherever they're wrestling yeah. uh, that you really are? Uh, so uh, Moxley right now is a guy that a guy I've liked for a long time, uh -huh. a guy that I respect, and um, he's kind of like entered this other level. You know, like I've always thought he was good, but he's he's on this other level right now. There's, you know, obviously Josh is a guy that sure. you know, I've been watching for years, getting a chance to work with him. And, uh, you know, he's just, he's really figured out who he is. And there's something really cool about that in wrestling when you, when you pick something and you decide this is who I am and this is what I'm about. And then you're able to execute that and make the rest of the world believe that that's who you are. It is a special thing. Um, Trey Miguel is amazing. Oh yeah. Speedball is amazing. Ace Austin, like, you know, Impact alone has a bunch of young guys. That are I mean, hungry. the some some of these guys do, it's like, they can do it's multiple crazy. their things. Like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's scary to watch sometimes, I'm you know. I'm a decent athlete, and most of those guys make me look like a slug, you know, is the honest truth. I, I probably could have played professional rugby. Uh, I played most sports, I, you know, at, at a pretty high level. I consider myself a pretty good athlete, but comparatively to some of these guys, it's, it's, uh, it's mind boggling. It's unbelievable yeah. how yeah, the athletes of today are just getting better and better. Yep. And, you know, or Rich Swan and all those guys, just unbelievable. Yeah, this stuff it. in it's the different. ring, you know, and it's like, and there's no fear even for any yep. of this. You know, they just go out and put it out there. So that's, it's a really interesting. No fear, and they're doing things that are almost physically impossible, and they make it look 
effortless. Ultimate you know? X? Like, how do you do that? Yeah, you know, well, how it, do you... It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. The level of wrestling, even from, like, I started in 1997, and the level of athleticism that's required today is... Like, I, there's lots of people that were super over and super popular and made millions of dollars in, like, the early 90s. Sure. They couldn't get a job now because they're not athletic enough. They couldn't they couldn't keep up with the style or the pace of athleticism today. It's uh, off the charts insane. And uh, that's the coolest thing about pro wrestling. It's an ultimate variety show. A little it bit really of something is. for everybody. Yeah. So it's, it's a really cool, really cool thing to see. No question. And finally, what do you want your legacy to kind of be? I know it's kind of a meta question, but yeah. like when you look back, what do, what do you want people to like remember you by and think of you when, when they hear the name Eric Young? Yeah, I think that for me, one of the things I'm most proud of is versatility. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know, you could ask 50 different people and what do you remember most about me? And I think you probably get probably 25, 30 different answers mm -hmm. from, from 50 different people. And that's cool. You know, like that's something that I think I've always prided myself on is, you know, whatever the gimmick is, I'm going to make those people believe that that's who I am, you know, and doing yeah. the, the comedy stuff. And, you know, like I get this, like, I'm not a huge person, but I'm almost six feet tall. I'm 230 pounds, 240 pounds. I'm a big man. And people would meet me like, holy man, you're way bigger than I thought. Uh -huh. Because I was constantly getting beaten up and fighting from underneath and laying on my back and, and uh, being the underdog. Team Canada, so right? many Team Canada. Yeah. Like, for two years, my gimmick was I was from Canada and everyone hated me for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. And I didn't speak. Uh, I was the guy that carried the, the load and fed yeah. comebacks and did the physical part of the matches. So I think for me, the versatility... Um, and for me, the a thing that's always been important for me is my peers. You know, like yeah. I, uh, I said before, I'm not political. And I think most people that have worked with me have enjoyed it. Um, it's been done the way wrestling should be done um, in an effort to make whatever it is that we're doing in that moment the best that it can be. Um, whether it's a you know small one minute and 30 second talking segment or it's a 25 minute main event with Josh Alexander. Yeah. So um, I think those are the two things. And the fact that... Um, I gave everything that I had available, you know, and that's always been important for me. From listening in front of five thousand or fifty thousand to the four, effort, those the, four people, four. Yeah. the effort's the same. Yeah. It's, it's never waned, and and uh, I do in indie still, and, and I just got back from from the United Kingdom, and uh, you know, like the version they see on TV on pay per views, I do the same, I'm the same effort on their show, whether it's five people or fifty thousand, same effort because it's because of the respect. You know, and the, the pride I take in my 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 career and, and the product that I put out, people are paying their hard-earned money, and I want them to feel fulfilled, and I'm part of that. I'm not the whole. I can't do everyone's work. I mean, I can only do what I can do. Uh, but I've always uh, taken pride in controlling what I can control and giving max effort all the time. No question. I think we've seen it throughout the years, and a heck of a guy, Eric. Appreciate so Thank much you, taking the time appreciate talking it. to me.